Let's have a further look at IPv6 addressing. In IP version 4, we had the idea of private and public IP addresses. A public IP address was what you needed if you're going to get yourself out onto the internet. And you would go to your ISP to get a, a public IP address. Private IP addresses are all documented in RFC 1918 and you can choose whichever of those you want it doesn't matter you're not going to be connecting to the internet and the fact that you're using the same ones um, as other companies are um, makes no difference because your network is totally private ipv6 has a similar concept it calls its public ip addresses global unicast because they're globally unique and it calls private ip addresses unique local unicast so to get out onto the IPv6 internet, you need to acquire a global unicast IP um, address for your, all your devices. So you'll go to an ISP and you'll ask them for a global routing prefix. The global routing prefix is the first block of the first part of your IPv6 address and it's unique to your organization, your company. Uh, identifies you globally on the internet so we have to have some way of globally assigning these so it's done in exactly the same way as IPv4 was at the top you've got IANA and IANA delegate responsibility to five regional registries in Asia there's APNIC in Latin America and um, the Caribbean you've got LACNIC Africa has AFRINIC North America has ARIN, and in Europe we've got the RIPE NCC. If you're an ISP, you have to belong to one of these organizations to get addresses. So Spitfire is a member of the RIPE NCC, with what's known as a local internet registry, or LIR. And we obtain IP addresses from RIPE, and then we assign them down on to our customers. What's interesting at the moment, if you look at IPv6 addresses, because IANA has only started allocating them out, you can look at an IP address and tell exactly where it's come from. In North America, all IP addresses start with 2001. In Africa, they all start with 2ABC. And in Europe, all IP addresses start with 2A02 because RIPE's been assigned that as their last 16. Spitfire has acquired from RIPE a range of um, IPv6 addresses. We've got a slash 32, and that is our slash 32. Out of that, we've assigned um, a small um, portion of networks down to customers. Um, the current thinking is the customers should be assigned, assigned slash 56 or slash 48. So the allocations we've made so far have all been slash 48s, and that makes the maths easier anyway. Now, you're probably thinking IP version 4 subnet was an absolute nightmare. IP version 6 is four times as long, therefore it's going to be four times the, the headache. But fear not, IPv6 subnetting is a little bit easier than IP version 4 for this simple reason. It's been decided that all LAN subnets will be fixed at slash 64s. So where in IPv4 you had to have variable length subnet mask and you had to chop things up into sizes that fit neatly into how many hosts you want. In IPv6 you don't have to worry about that. Every single LAN gets a slash 64. That's what the rules say. Now slash 64, if you think about how many IP addresses that is, it's 2 to the power of 16.4. 2 to the power of 64, which is a huge number. It's 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion, 73 billion, 709 million, 561,616 IP addresses per LAN. And if you're assigned the slash 48, then you've got 65,536 of those to play with on, on your network. So we'll have no more arguments with customers now about whether they really need that extra IP address and can, can they not do without it. IPv6 just blows all that away. 
And you're probably thinking, well, isn't this going too far the other way? Isn't this really going over the top? Haven't the internet boffins gone totally mad? Well, IPv6 is more than just about an enlarged address space. IPv6 is a totally new protocol that's designed for a world where there are a lot more devices on the internet. And you've heard people talking about the Internet of Things, where everything in your home, from the refrigerator to the cooker and all the light bulbs in your house, will have an IPv6 address. And you don't want to have to statically assign IP addresses to every single light bulb in your house. So IPv6 has a way of assigning addresses automatically called Slack. And in order to do that, you need the host portion to be a fixed size. And it's decided that that fixed size will be a slash 64. So a company acquires a global routing prefix from their ISP. And in this case, we'll say it's a slash 48. And the network engineer has the task of chopping that up into loads of slash 64s for all their LAN subnets. So the first part of the IP address, or well, the first 48 bits is the global routing prefix. The host portion is fixed at 64 bits. You can't do anything about that. So the engineer has 16 bits to play with to make up subnets. And as we've said, he can make up 65,000 of those. So the thing to do is to get out a spreadsheet and to start listing down all the possible values of those IP subnets, of which there are 65,536. Uh, we start with 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to F, and then we jump into the next column, 1, 0, so on and so forth, all the way up to F, F, F. You remember in IP version 4, we can't use the first one, and exactly the same applies to IP version 6. In IP version 4, that's the subnet ID. In IP version 6, that's called the subnet root at any cast address, and you just can't use it. But don't worry about it, it still leaves you with um, a huge amount of subnets to, to play with. So, having written out all the possible values for his subnets, this engineer is an ABBA fan. So, he's decided to use the ABBBA as his subnet prefix. And so he'll add that onto his global routing prefix. And then they'll start assigning IP addresses to devices on their network. So for the router, it might well be sensible to give that the, the first IP address, dot one. Or an organization might decide that they're going to call, have all their routers um, using AAAA. -A -A -A. What, whatever they, they, they want to do, you've got a huge amount of IP addresses. And router IP addresses, they will probably still be given a fixed static IP address, manually configured by an engineer. But then all the other devices on the local area network will acquire an IP address normally, automatically. And we'll talk about that process later. Finally, um, let's talk about unique local unicast addresses. These are the equivalents in IPv6 of private IP addresses in IPv4. They're very simple in that um, you just start your IPv6 address with the letters FD. So any IP ad address starting with FD you know is a local unicast address. You then add to that 40 random bits to make up your 48 bit um, routing prefix, you just choose whatever values you want to. You still then got 16 bits of subnet to play with to make up your subnet value, and then you've got your 64 bit host portion.